Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. Let's get started. For quite some time now, I've been getting questions about the microphone that I use here at Mr. Carlson's Lab. And the microphone that you're hearing me talk into right now is this microphone right here. Now, many of you know, uh, especially if you're on Patreon and you've seen a lot of the move, uh, I'm moving labs. So the area that you see here, and uh, you would think that this is at the old lab that you see in the intro, uh, this is a completely new lab. It's set up much the same as the other lab. It's just that the lighting isn't in here yet and everything like that. So this is the reason that I have another microphone that's the same as the one that you're listening to. Now, mind you, the one that you're listening to has modifications to it. And uh, I will share those modifications once I do them to this particular microphone here. But uh, this is the product that, uh, that you're listening to. Now, don't get me wrong. This microphone is fantastic out of the box. It's uh, an absolutely wonderful sounding microphone. And for the price point of the microphone itself, it's, um, yeah, it's just really, really great value for what you get. It's a very well put together device. And uh, I'll show you the insides of this microphone here very, very soon. So you can kind of look at this as a, a bit of an unboxing video just because uh, uh, of the lab move and everything like that. Um, this is, I haven't even taken the thing out of the box yet. And I've had this for probably seven months now. So I'll uh, open this up and I'll show you exactly what you get in one of these, uh, you know, WA-47 uh, tube condenser microphone boxes. So uh, a little bit more on the story here. Uh, there's another lab that is uh, being built. There's actually another two that are being built. And this one is gonna be in that lab. Uh, reason being is I don't wanna move the miking and the processing gear all the time because uh, it's a lot of stuff to move aside from the camera. Uh, the camera itself is very big and everything like that. So I just wanna set up two areas. So that also streamlines my flow a little bit better, which helps me make videos quicker so that you guys all get videos a little faster. So there's a lot of reasoning behind this. So before I uh, you know, am finished with this thing, I'll, uh, I'll share what I've done here in the uh, in the very near future. So anyways, so this is the box. I have the camera on an interesting angle right now because this is really, really big. So I'll move the, the uh, camera here in a moment and we'll take a look at the microphone and inside the microphone and, uh, and all that kind of stuff here. So I'll just open this box, give me a sec. So this is what you get when you open the box. At least this is what was in my box. So, uh, this is the top here, you get manuals and stuff in a bag here. And then if I move this out of the way, this is what is in the actual bottom portion of the box. So we have this very nice wooden box here, which the uh, microphone is in. And uh, here's the power supply, and that's the, uh, the cable that goes from the mic to the power supply, and then there's the shock mount. So what I'll do is I will move the camera here so we can get a better look kind of straight down at things, and uh, we'll take a close look at the mic, take the mic out of the box, open it up, we'll take a look inside and uh, look at all the rest of the accessories that come with the uh, WA-47. All right, here's a closer look at what's in the box. So what I'll do is I'll take all the stuff out, uh, get the box out of the way, and we'll take a close look at everything here. So this is a shock mount. So of course the microphone gets in there and you clip it in. And uh, this one here has two extra bands. I don't recall these bands being in my original. I may have got them and maybe they're just misplaced or something like that. But at any rate, that's kind of nice that they give you two spare bands for the shock mount. Now, mind you, uh, the bands that I've got on my microphone are still the originals and they're in mint condition. There's no problems with them whatsoever. So unless, you know, you're abnormally hard on your microphone, I, I honestly can't see you needing these things. And I've had this microphone and this, um, the uh, mic, the shock mount for a long time. Uh, no issues there. I did do a modification to my shock mount. Uh, I replaced this, the soft foam inside with uh, an actual felt. I'll talk about that here in a moment. So this here is a, uh, a little adapter so you can adapt this to different mic stands and things like that. This is the cable that runs from the microphone to the power supply, so you don't need a phantom supply with this microphone. So, uh, and they give you plenty of cable too. It's a nice long run, um, you know, multi-conductor cable because the microphone has got lots of different voltages it needs to operate, right? Because there's a vacuum tube inside the microphone, right? So that's that. And there's a power cable down here for the power supply, which is basically just a, a standard computer type power supply cable. Kind of, uh, kind of idea there. Power supply. 
So you can select the pattern for the microphone here, uh, XLR out to uh, your processing gear, whatever you have. And then of course this runs to the mic. On this side here, uh, I've been power supply, the power cord in, on off switch, indicator lamp, and a voltage selector here. So that is the uh, actual power supply itself. So it has quite a bit of weight to it, you know, nice power transformer in there and all that. Move that out of the way. And then here is the uh, the microphone. So what's inside this box is, uh, is what you're listening to. So I'm just going to get this box out of the way and we'll start with this. We'll take a look at uh, the actual microphone itself. All right, so as you can see, it comes with a nice transportation box here. They did a really nice job on the uh, box. Honestly, uh, I've taken mine out of the box and it's never been in since. It just stays on the mic stand. So there it is. Inside, very you know, nice, soft, plush box for you to put the microphone back in. It's nice and tight so that if you're going to be moving this thing around, of course, the box is going to be taking, uh, you know, the hits and things. And this is very, very soft inside. So if you can see that there. So a nice place to store the microphone if you're going on the road or something like that. So you don't, you know, bump it or anything like that. So get this out of the way. Here's the mic. In the bag. And there it is, and that's what the uh, actual microphone looks like. It's a really large microphone, and it has a lot of weight to it. These are pretty heavy microphones. The uh, the stand that mine is on has a counterbalance, basically, on the other side of the, the mic boom. So, you know, the, the microphone right now is like this. It's being held like this, and then the shock mounts here, and then there's a boom, and then the, the actual stands here, and then on the other end, there's a big heavy weight so that I can move this around, because if there was no counterweight, this thing would just, you know, fall down. It's, it is a pretty heavy microphone. So what I'll do is uh, I'll open this thing up, and we'll take a look what's inside this, uh, this very nice microphone here. All right, let's take a look inside the microphone. So I'm still adjusting the processing gear for this uh, for this setup here because I'm at the new lab and I haven't really spent much time with the processing gear yet. I've just moved it from the old one. And again, of course, since you move from one area to the next, everything has to be kind of, I guess you could say, tweaked to the area. So that's an ongoing process. I'll probably spend quite a few hours of the processing gear again and readjust everything and then once everything's perfect usually what I do is I take a picture of all the settings because if I ever bump it or move it I don't want to have to spend the time to move everything around again so I use a pair of uh, studio monitor headphones and uh, and uh, listen to everything that's going on here as I'm speaking and try and tune everything in so right now everything's kind of crude so uh, what you hear with this microphone here will still improve as well so this is the, uh, that's the mic element right there. As you can see, they've done just a fantastic job of putting this together. Look at that. Yeah, very nice. Very nicely done. You know, even the, the top is just very, very, it's, it's just this alone is really, really heavy. Very nice job on everything here. They did a really nice job putting this microphone together. And I really mean that. So I'm not getting paid for an interview or a, a review here or anything. This is just my own microphone. So what you see here is uh, is uh, what I'm telling you. There's no there's no sponsoring or no anything. So uh, you're welcome, Warm. So there you go. There we go. Let's see this. Let's open. Be very careful when you move this out. And there is the inside. Let's take a closer look at what's going on here. There you go. There's the transformer in the bottom. Very nice circuit boards. There's the vacuum tube right there. It's very interesting about these newer 5751s is that the internal plate structure of the 5751 is identical, very, very close to, I should say, to a 6DJ8. So 
Uh, the 6DJ8 has some pretty fantastic ratings. And um, you know, this is labeled a 5751, not a 6DJ8. So for all of you vacuum tube guys out there that know what a 6DJ8 looks like, the, um, the internal structure looks very, very close to that. So I don't know what they're thinking of JJ. Maybe, um, maybe they found that that uh, vacuum tube... Uh, the way that the, the 6DJ8 works inside, maybe they've somehow tailored it to have the 5751's ratings. So there's the circuit board on the top. And as you can see, the leads that run up to the element there. Now again, down the road, when I do modification, I'll share all that. Or the modification that to the microphone right now that you're listening to, which is, you know, this microphone right here, right? Now, as another thing, uh, uh, doing any type of work on something like this is uh, rather tedious because you can't have anything exposed. Every time you test it, this has to be completely shielded. And I don't mean just the body on it, right? I don't mean just this thing. You actually have to have this thing on the top of it as well because if you don't, uh, the moment that this thing is off, this thing will just hum like crazy. It's a very, very sensitive mic. So the whole thing has to be put together to test it. And then if you want to make any modifications, you have to take the whole thing right apart again and work on it and then put it back together and take it apart. So uh, it needs to be completely shielded just because of the sensitivity of the device. So uh, if any of you have owned one of these and you've taken this top off, uh, you'll know what, what, uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> so it's a, you'll get no audio except uh, just noise out of it, hum and all that kind of stuff. So it has to be completely shielded. And that's one of the reasons that this, you know, this is a really heavy shell, you know. So, uh, yeah, nice piece of metal there. Same with this. Yeah, the whole thing is very well built. Little tube retainer here to hold the tube in place. So if this thing was to go mobile, and there's even foam in there. So if this thing was to go mobile and this was to, you know, be bumped around, the, the tube is held in place. And uh, since it's, you know, inverted, you know, it keeps it tight in the socket so nothing comes out. So, um, yeah, very nice job on the inside of this, uh, you know, on the inside of this uh, microphone here. I always like things that are very well put together and very well designed and uh, you know how picky I am if you've been on this channel for a while yeah I just uh, this is a very well put together very nice device so what I'll do is I'll move this thing out of the way we'll take a look at the power supply we'll open up the power supply and take a look in it see how well it's put together all right let's take a look inside the power supply so i've removed all the screws to save you from that so there's one here one here this is a ground connection so this doesn't need to come off and one here and one here and uh case just slides off like that and as you can see it's a nice linear power supply inside here nice heavy little power transformer filter capacitors down here a little regulator over here so yeah everything is put together very nicely inside here a pattern selection switch with all the resistors from contact to contact there nice you know steel construction nice heavy box and it's the same thing with the top like this is very heavy so it's none of that uh, you know soft aluminum type construction where you can grab this and just bend it nothing like that it is a steel construction so it is very rugged so they did a nice job putting this together as well nice clean design and it shows because you know the thing is, the microphone is incredibly quiet. It's a very nice, quiet microphone. So that's uh, an indication of good design right there without even looking inside the uh, the power supply. So uh, pretty impressed with the power supply as well. Let's take a look at the shock mount. This is the shock mount for the microphone here. So this is completely sealed. I had to cut the edge of the bag off here. So it's the first time it's been out for me as well. So these here are the replacement bands here. So you can see that. For the shock mount and what happens with this is uh, you know obviously this screws onto your boom and uh, you open these little clips up like so you put your microphone in there and then when the microphone's in you clip this tight onto the microphone itself now my shock mount was identical to this and it had the same black material in it it's almost like a, it feels like a rubberized foam it might be something different but it, uh, it feels like that and after a long time, the microphone actually got relatively loose in here. So it's like this stuff compresses. And maybe the actual, the warmth of the microphone shell or itself or something like that is uh, keeping this compressed. And it, after a while, it got very loose. I was to the point to where I was uncomfortable leaving the microphone in here. So what I did is I took this out and I put felt in here. So uh, you can buy you know felt sheets 
that are relatively thick with a sticky back. And what I did is I just cut them to the, you know, the same width as this. So I used a cutting board and uh, put the new, removed this stuff and put the new felt in here. And then what I did was I bent these out just a little bit. So I bent these out so this uh, pinches this just a little bit tighter. And I've had no problems with it since. It's uh, the microphone itself is very, very tight. If I grab the mic and twist the mic, it'll actually move this whole center unit. So it's, uh, it's nice and tight. It holds it uh, very firm. The last thing you want is that microphone to end up sliding down here. And mine was on, on the uh, verge of doing that. In fact, uh, I could put it in there and uh, come back later and it actually had moved down a little bit. That makes me very uncomfortable. I don't want to leave the microphone for any length of time and then, you know, have it come out and hit the bench or something like that. So the, uh, the felt was a, uh, a very good modification. Other than that, uh, the bracket itself is very, very well built. It's a nice heavy bracket. You just move this up here and uh, give it a bit of a tighten. And this is just solid, like this isn't moving. So you can put the mic on any angle and just give that a bit of a cinch and it holds it in place. And uh, I've had no issues with this whatsoever. So very, very nice, uh, very nice shock mount. Did a nice job and it came with these replacement bands. Again, I don't remember that in my other one. Maybe I did and I put them in a drawer or something, but uh, that's nice that it has some replacements. Here are the cables that come with the microphone. So this is the exact same cable that's on my microphone and I've had it for years. I've driven scope carts across it, stepped on it, maybe even occasionally tripped over it. And no problems, there's no cuts in it or anything. So nice strong cable. And of course the microphone is very silent and uh, you know that just tells you the cable quality right there. Nice, uh, nice ends on the cable, so they're a very nice positive fit to the actual the power supply itself and to the microphone. So, yeah, it even feels nice. It's just a, a nice feeling cable, and this is a uh, you know a power cord, so uh, kind of you know computer power supply type cord here, and uh, you know short run works well. Now. Because I'm in a lab here and I have lots of signals going all the time, I have you know low frequency signals happening in here and high frequency signals depending on what I'm testing and uh, things like that. And uh, of course, if I'm you know working on something with a heavy load, all right. So say I have a very large power supply and I'm load testing it or something like that, I have the uh, the my actual processing gear and the microphone behind an isolation transformer that's also a filter as well. Now I've just done that here for myself because I'm in this atmosphere and um, uh, of course when you load power supplies, especially big switch mode power supplies and things like that, uh, I just like to keep things as quiet as possible. For, for normal audio use, if you're a musician or anything like that, of course you don't need anything like that. But uh, I'll show you all of that as well here in the future. And I'll also in the future, I'll show you some of the processing gear, the stuff that I've used, which of course, you know, it's at Mr. Carlson's lab, so it's modified as well, right? <laughs> Everything I have, I seem to modify. It's like, at any rate, so there you go. This is, uh, these these are the cables for the uh, the microphone, and that's pretty much it for this mic. You know, there's some manuals and stuff, but uh, you know, this is the standard stuff in, in, the, in the manuals, nothing too exciting there. Oh, can't forget this, this is very important. So uh, anyways, uh, yeah. There you have it. If you're enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that as well. If you'd like to be notified as soon as I post a new video, don't forget to tap that bell symbol. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the show more tab below the video's description and I'll also pin the link at the top of the comment section so if you click on the link it'll take you right there. Alright, until next time, take care. Bye for now.